Chapter 5 Into the Lake Beowulf and Hrothgar were at the head of the Geats and Danes. They followed the footprints of Grendel's mother and the blood that had dripped from the body of Esker. They could still see clearly, too, the blood left by Grendel the previous day. The monsters had gone in the same direction. They rode over the bleak, lonely moors and through the dark forest until they came to the lake, the same place where Grendel had dragged his wounded body. I have heard hunters describe this awful place, said Hrothgar. He nodded in the direction of the water. They say that if a deer is chased here, it will turn and face the hunters and the dogs rather than jump into that lake. Everyone looked at the lake and shivered. The dark water bubbled. Ferocious snakes swam just below the surface. Look over there, said one of the geats, pointing at some rocks. Hrothgar looked and then looked quickly away, biting his lip. Eskir's head, he said softly. Beowulf put his hand on Hrothgar's arm. You will have revenge, he said. He jumped off his horse and put on his chainmail. But before he could put on his sword belt, Unferth ran towards him. No, Beowulf, take this sword. It was given to me. No one who has used it has ever been defeated. It's called Hranting. You deserve it more than me. Thank you for your sword said Beowulf. And for your words. He turned to Hrothgar. If I don't succeed, if I don't return from down there, he said, nodding towards the water, take care of my Geat warriors. Send all the gifts you have given me to King Hialak. He will see what a magnificent ring-giver you have been to me. And give Unferth my own sword, because with Hrunting I will win or I will die. Beowulf didn't wait for an answer. His mind was focused on fame now. He dived into the lake immediately. He swam down and down for hours and hours. Monsters attacked him and he slashed at them with his sword. Grendel's mother knew that someone was coming. She had been living at the bottom of that lake for a hundred years and nothing could happen there without her knowing it. She attacked him ferociously, with her sharp teeth biting him again and again, but his chainmail protected him. Snakes and monstrous creatures that lived at the bottom of the lake attacked him too with their vicious teeth, but the chainmail still protected Beowulf. Down at the bottom of the lake, Grendel's mother had her lair, a cave where the water didn't come. Slowly but surely, she dragged the struggling Beowulf there. Where am I? thought Beowulf. Suddenly, he was on dry ground in a cave. There were fires burning, and for the first time, he could see the monstrous creature who was kneeling above him, staring at him with her red eyes full of hatred. With a huge effort, Beowulf pushed her away and jumped up. Hrunting, he thought, and he drew the sword that Unferth had given him, the sword that had gone through the helmets and chainmail of so many warriors in battle. He swung his arm high in the air and brought it down on the head of Grendel's mother. Nothing happened. Again and again, Beowulf attacked and hit her, but the sword had no effect on her. In frustration, Beowulf threw Hrunting on the floor. Very well, he thought. I'll fight her with my bare hands, just like I fought her demon son. He moved towards the monster, eager to feel his hands around her throat. With a horrible laugh that echoed through the cave, Grendel's mother pulled out a knife. Its sharp blade flickered in the firelight as she moved towards Beowulf. Beowulf took a step backwards. His foot hit a rock, and he stumbled and fell.